Hello everyone, welcome to my review for Conrad, as well as the update for the GHB Tempest Trial tier list. This time obviously we'll be looking at Conrad, and well, let's get started, eh? So, he comes with a very underwhelming kit, however his stat line is quite solid actually. His stat line is very easy to work with, but well, you'll see once we get to the build ver to the build variation and all. As far as kit is concerned, bracing stance is not exactly available, so the fact that it's available now is sort of nice. Though the skill itself is typically really only good on dancers. You know, units that are not really meant to fight in the first place. But it makes it a bit easier for them to just take attacks without dying. Obviously, ideally you want Fortress Death Rez on your dancers. Like, obviously Olivia is one of the best user of it. Hitting upward to 42 Death Rez before any buff is even applied. However... That is a very difficult fodder to obtain, so Bracing Stance is a good compromise. Now, the first merge for Conrad is a bit bizarre. I believe this is at least the only time this ever happened, but he does not get attack nor speed. He straight up only get death and res, as well as HP. For some reason, res is his highest base stat. I mean, at level 1. A bit of strange, but I'll take it. Now for the comparison, there's literally a 5 star exclusive here. Only here really to highlight the insanity as far as Conrad's stat line is concerned. As you can very well see, Conrad actually has better bulk than Burkut. As a matter of fact, the only thing Burkut really has is attack. Four points of attack in a very gimmicky lens that barely works. Yeah. Conrad is just more flexible and overall I'd say he is a better unit overall than even Fallen Burkut. Despite the fact he's a free unit. And if you even compare him to Death Knight, now Death Knight is a bit of a weird case. His weapon can be good, but it's also very limiting in the sense that his weapon can be fairly solid in AR, for example, where buffs are a lot more present, and also where you have multiple raid team. In other words, if the team you're fighting does not really have buffs, you can just switch to a different team and therefore Death Knight is not really hindered as a result. You'll just deploy him against a team that has buffs that are more manageable for him to deal with. But he's also fairly awkward because you can't really use lol skills effectively with him, which hampers his potential by quite a bit. As a matter of fact, as far as speed is concerned, Conrad is superior, as weird as that is to say. Purely for the fact that he can actually run low attack speed without any risk of screwing himself over. And if you're, you know, not using uh, Death Knight's Pref, well, you're just kind of worse in Death and Res by such large amounts that it's not even worth comparing. You're literally behind by 4 defense and 9 res. Same HP and the speed is a bit better, but at full merges, it doesn't really matter all that much. You'll see why I say this once I start talking about the builds themselves. Obviously, Death Knight still has more attack. Attack is actually the one problem Conrad, yeah, Conrad has. Thankfully though, buffing attack is very easy, so fixing that stat is a lot easier than fixing death by 4 points and then res by 9. Of course, if Death Knight's weapon works against whatever you're fighting, Death Knight will typically do better. 
blocking follow-ups on top of getting 4 across the board is a massive boon, especially on top of cooldown minus 1. However, Death Knight is more of a high potential, or ra rather high risk, high reward in the sense that, well, you're risking the fact that your enemy might have no buff on and therefore you're a bit of a sitting duck. But high reward when it actually works out. Conrad is more consistent, however, and I do consider him to be slightly better than Death Knight for that reason alone. Now, before going to the builds, I actually went out of my way to not have a single one with Slaying Lance. But if you're curious, you can just run Slaying Lance Bonfire with Brave Lucina support. Uh, a few set also will have Brave Lucina support in mind. Obviously, I'll point it out, but. It's worth mentioning. And, well, let's just swap to one. The first one is obvious. Actually, both of these are fairly obvious. The best way to describe these sets is essentially Forsyth, but with three movement. Doesn't need to have uh, someone babysitting him to end up, you know, having two movement with Armor March, which is quite nice. And, uh,. De deals more damage. That's the best way I can really describe it. Attack Death Bond, Attack Res Bond, you're actually pushing yourself to 67 attack. You get hit, obviously, this is a Brave Lucina set, both of these are. If you have Brave Lucina support, you instant proc Noontime. That's 10 extra damage with 67 base attack. And you heal yourself by 30% of the damage done. You get hit again, you proc noon time again. I think you see where I'm going with this. And it's not reliant on your on any HP threshold to work. Because even say uh, you're you're below quick repose, you still get the instant proc of noon time, which might push you back to quick repose range. But more importantly, you'll have enough damage to actually heal yourself back up while also potentially one-shutting the enemy. Not to mention, the bulk is no slouch either. 54 defense and 53 res is really hard to take down. And of course, the enemy cannot debuff your attack stat, which is very helpful in general. Because as I mentioned before, Conrad's main issue is his attack stat. Now, one of the reasons why I consider him to be one of the better you, one of the better teammates for Brave Lucina is quite simple. Think of it this way: Yes, some of the best unit to combo into Brave Lucina are obviously infantry units. But if you have a full infantry unit, you can't really use tactics, and therefore buffing become a lot harder as a result. Yeah. However, if you're, you know say running two infantries, one cav and one flyer, it's not that bad anymore because you can actually run tactics. Honestly one of the best team you can make with Conrad, Brave Lucina is Brave Lucina, Brave Ike obviously, these two are just made to be together, Conrad and then Rayson. Rayson can provide ground orders which is really good with bonds by the way. He can provide a bit of healing at the start of every turn, which improves the sustainability as well as the healing for Brave Ike, as well as Conrad, which are both really good tanks. Brave Lucina also provides bulk, attack, and speed to Conrad, which is also not bad. And see it this way, if you block a double from someone, well, you still have noontime ready for the next fight. That's actually quite helpful. If you have it instantly ready, well, you can just jump in and potentially one-shot your enemy. That's quite good. The three across the board is also no slouch. With the set on the left, you're sitting at 70 attack as a result. 70 attack is quite good, especially when paired up with 57 defense and 56 res. Yeah, uh, 
Like I said, this is essentially just a better for Scythe as far as healing goes. He does the same, even potentially healing himself for more, and also has more damage easier. The set on the right is a bit more standard, running this encounter, of course, and, you know, losing a bit of um, stats for it, but it's absolutely fine. You still hit 50 death and res. Do note, while I use death ploy, you can really use any other ploys. You can use attack ploy to increase your bulk to 55 across the board. Or, you know, also in the first set, so you can end up with 62 death, 61 res, essentially. Hell, I'm gonna be honest here, it works with Brave Lucina perfectly as well. Attack Ploy plus Brave Lucina, 58 death and res. That's not bad. And, you know, you can then combo this into, say, oh, Attack Death Bond. Brave Lucina, you're already at 63 attack, and what you can do is take your Brave Lucina and slap double drive attack on her if you think your attack is lacking. 9 attack buff that way, and, well, still a bit of bulk. That way you'd be at 69 attack, so that's quite good. And again, Noontime will heal you back up so you can stay in quick repose range. You can also this. You could also run speed ploy because then you can push your re, your speed up to 40. If you ploy the enemy, of course, combo into Brave Lucino. That's 40 speed. That's not bad. You can actually combo the bond into attack speed bond, and you're at 45 speed. You see where I'm going with this? You can actually prevent doubles naturally as a result. But yeah. Let's move on to the second page of builds. Again, this is mostly with Brave Lucina in mind. The set on the left is mostly just bulk. As obvious as this is. 54 death, 53 res. Which is not bad. Also, if you decide to go with attack speed bond in the first and second set where, you know, you end up having enough speed. Uh, I'd say the ideal thing to do is to switch Quick Repose to low attack speed. Because at that point, you might just double naturally. So there's no point, really, in running Quick Repose anymore. So low attack speed makes you double more consistently. Negates buff in attack and speed on your enemy side, which makes you tank easier, and also double more consistently. It's just a consistency boost, what can I say? With Ignis also, and, you know, that much bulk, you can actually park Ignis in basically every fight, and just murder whatever you're dealing with. Because at the end of the day, if you have 54 base defense, and you proc Ignis with this. Well, whatever you're fighting is taking 43 extra damage and probably dies. Shocking literally no one. Again, the ploy is really up to you. It's very flexible which one you use. Outside of, of course, risk ploy. Next up is the enemy phase focus set with Tannen Boom. Now, I'm going to explain what Tannen Boom does, because most people forget it even exists. Tannen Boom gives you two across the board on enemy phase. Combos really well with bonds, since bonds are mostly used on enemy phase. So, you can actually end up with... You know, you have your 35 speed here. Tannen Boom pushes that to 37. Attack Speed Bond pushes that to 42. Low attack speed pushes that to 45. Yeah. You heard that right. 45 speed right there. And your enemy cannot use speed buffs either to actually double you. Outside of drives, of course, and in combat buffs. And just in case, speed ploy is also there in case you're afraid of missing it. It's as simple as this. 
you're basically just sitting at 45 speed. Can it can hit on both phases, and you still end up having 50 death, 51 res, because Ten and Boom provides you two death, two res, and lol attack removes three attack from the enemy. Oh, and also it negates attack tactic and other such attack buffs, making you again more consistent. It's very hard for him to take damage at that point, you're quick enough to double, and you still are looking at 62 attack. 62 attack, 45 speed, with 50 death and 51 res. Let that sink in. Your lowest stat is 45. And now let's move on a bit further again. You can actually run Gale Force, as weird as that is to say. Shell Lance is the opposite of Tannin Boom. It gives you two across the board on initiation. So to put it simply, 55 attack, 57, 63. You're at 63 attack. Now, I want to say something about Heavy Blade, which makes it a lot more consistent. Low attack speed combos into Heavy Blade quite well. Not only does he gain from it from from the low attack side for more bulk, but he also negates buff in attack from the enemy side, as well as make them lose 3 attack. So Heavy Blade is indirectly more consistent through that skill. So you're looking at 63 attack, even a plus 10 rid with attack tactic, which is at 71 attack essentially, would get hit by Heavy Blade. Because he'd be sitting at 63 attack and he'd be pushed down to 62. Let that sink in. That's a unit with 65 attack unbuffed. That's kind of insane. 41 base attack without the weapon. Oh, and 65 attack is also considering Dragon Flowers, by the way. As far as speed is concerned, you are at 35, 37, 44 speed. And you obviously reduce the enemy speed by 3, so you end up being at 47 speed. At that point, you're already at the magic number. Dragon Flowers can push you to 48, but, you know, I don't really consider those. As far as bulk is concerned, again, on initiation, you're looking at 50 death and 51 res. And after you've killed your first unit, which at that point is very easy, you can debuff everyone around them by 7 attack, pushing your bulk to 57 death and 58 res. Which makes you fairly solid overall. So, yeah, overall fairly good. And then on the other side, I was stupid and I forgot that I had Heavy Blade as a seal. My bad on that one. I should have run Bonfire instead. That was my fault. Anyway. Just basically consider the set with Bonfire. Flashing Blade... Uh, Flashing Blade... Flashing Carrot is essentially a bit of a mix of the last two. The last two are more consistent in long-lasting fights because of stuff like Savage Blow Pain plus uh, residual damage from other fights and so on. Flashing Carrot is giving you two across the board if your enemy's HP is at full. This is good for multi-phasing, as is attack speed solo, of course. So, it's basically two across the board regardless of the phase, as long as your enemy has full health. With this set, you are looking at 63 attack, 43 speed. However, because of low attack speed, you go from... you go from that to 63 attack 46 speed. Really good offensively, not to mention defensively you are still looking at 50-51, and with attack smoke 
57-58. Yeah. The dude is quite good. And with Bonfire at that point, well, you proc 25 damage. And typically block follow-ups unless you're dealing with something like Bolt Fighter. This makes him fairly solid overall, though he loses on this encounter as a result. So do be wary about that one. Overall, quite a solid unit that can actually be used in many ways. Honestly, Conrad's biggest strength is his flexibility at plus 10. It's honestly shocking. The only thing I would have said that could have been making him a bit better would have been moving maybe 2 or 3 HP into speed. Otherwise, the stat line is actually quite solid for high merge projects. Now moving on to the tier list itself. I've put him in S-. minus. As I said, Death Knight is overall better sometimes, but it relies on your enemy having buffs, which is something you should never rely on in general. When, when you have... When you end up, you know, relying on your opponent to do something in particular, this is typically a bad move. It's better to be relying on something you have more control on. Unless it's something like the AI going in a certain way so you can ploy them. That kind of, po that kind of thing is completely fine. It's just when you get to a point where you need them to have a buff, to even function, that's kind of a problem. That said, when Death Knight has a payoff, it is a better payoff than Conrad. It's just that Conrad is a lot more consistent. Also can run many more sets and can work in many more situation, I feel like. Death Knight is definitely at its best in AR, and outside of AR, he's a bit not great, I'll say that much. But yeah, overall I'd say he's a fairly solid addition. I know a lot of people have been disappointed about how his stats were looking like at first and were like, oh, it's just very cute, but like again, and honestly, no, no it's not. He just is a lot more flexible than you can think he is at first. Although, I will say, obviously, his best team is by far Brave Ike, Brave Lucina, himself, and Raisin. By far one of the better team you can run with him. It actually opens up a lot of things for him because of the cooldown reduction, allowing him to run stronger special, more dangerous special, and just overall making more of a threat. That said, though, I'd say he's a fairly solid addition. Like I said, he's basically Forsyth on a horse, but with salvageable speed. That extra two points of speed goes a long way, especially when you have low attack speed to add on top of it. Something Forsyth just cannot run. So, yeah. In conclusion, I'd say Conrad is a fairly solid addition, which is honestly weird. I, I think it's one of the rare time where I actually go out of my way to say a unit is good when most people are saying it's bad and not the opposite. <laughs> Quite a refreshing change, however. But I think I sh I, I've held you all long enough. I'll just move on now. And I'll see you all later. Have a good day, everyone. I'll see you later. I'll see you probably tomorrow for the stream also. I'm not streaming today like I typically do for the few people who are not on the Discord yet and are wishing to know. But yeah, have a nice time. I have a nice time. Have a nice day, y'all. See ya.